Hello, internet. How's it going? Welcome to the Archetype stream. I am your host, Ashley. Happy Tuesday. Hope you guys have your coffee, regardless of what time of day it is for you guys. As always, if you're there, say hi in the chat. I always like to see people popping in. And let's get started. So <clears throat> we started off last week by finishing um, our character's uh, block out, just to sculpt. And let me go ahead and hide this base, because remember, we're also printing it um, for a little uh, miniature. Morning fam, says Fox. I'll also be printing it probably bigger later, um, which will be fun. I just uh, invested into a little beginner's airbrush kit, so I'm pretty excited. <laughs> we'll see how terribly I can paint in real life. It's going to be great. I can't wait. Um, something to not stare at a computer screen is basically my goal. But, <clears throat> yeah, so we basically have her um, figure all blocked out along with some of her... Uh, I blocked out some of her hair and um, kind of finalized some of her face a little bit as well. Obviously her face could change a bit as we go along. Um, I think for, you know, our character, maybe we can add some cool um, face paint and stuff later. So let me switch this. I always like to, um, when I start blocking in a character, I like to start by getting all the colors in. So I like to block out um, colors and things like that. And it's really easy to be able to just uh, go in here and do something. It always gives them a little bit more life too. And it's one of those things, especially when painting and sculpting people, I think it's really helpful to go in here and um, try to add like a little bit of warmth to their face in certain areas. Just minor color adjustments. Doesn't have to be anything crazy, just a little bit. Adding some, not exactly eyeshadow, but more of like color variation underneath the eye will give it a bit more depth and stuff too. Um, you don't want to do this stage too, too early to, you know, mess up what your sculpt will actually end up looking like. But once you get a decent idea, I think it's pretty good to go in here and try to you know, you can add some warmth. Ooh, I always do that. Warmth to her ears and stuff like that. Just makes it feel like more skin feels like skin if you do it this way, um, which is helpful. So this is just something that I like to do as I start to block out the character more. As you can see, the eye also has um, this is how I like to cheat it. So it's actually recessed in and then where there would be a shadow on your iris, um, I painted it in darker blue, and then on the where the light would hit, you paint in kind of like a lighter. You can get more crazy with this if you want to in texture, but for this, I feel like it sells, you know, that shadow that's casted there. And if you wanted to emphasize that a bit more too, you could take the whites of the eyes, lower that down and paint a shadow. Um, across the top of it a little bit. So I'm actually painting, as you can see, a shadow. And that'll help sell some depth too. And then to get the whites, it's just a piece of uh, geometry here. That's just painted white to get the, the whites of the eyes. I feel like it sells usually pretty well and I don't have to worry about um, my light facing a proper way to get that plasticky look. It's just kind of, especially when you're doing like a stylized character, I feel like it just helps um, sell the feel of the character that you're going for. Cool. Now we have that, we can start blocking out some clothes. Um, I always like to work from what I already have, which is always really handy. So I'll go ahead and grab her. I don't need... can delete higher, delete lower, because I don't need subdivisions, but I don't need this part, and I probably don't need her arms. 
and her torso probably or not this torso how big is this okay that's one whole thing i'll just keep that so what i'll do now and i don't need her feet so i'll do it hidden and then we'll take this and use his pants so i can split that away and now i can go ahead and start working with this for the shirt So I'll go ahead and dynamesh this together and it can be really low res um, because it's just trying to get an idea. Inflate the sleeves a bit more, right? Cause she's got kind of like poofy sleeves and she's wearing like a um, kind of a cut kimono type thing. So we're going to try to play with that more. Oh, Kevin said that was a super sick intro. I know the intro is cool. Intro makes me look way cooler than uh, than I am. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go ahead and grab this real quick. Out of the I'm just cutting the kimono. Up. I like using the slice curve because now I get this very um, exact replica shape. It's all nice and cut off and squared off. And then from here, I'll also make sure that I color it something different. So I think in my concept, I have it being kind of like, you know, a foresty green type color. Um, and then what we'll do probably is I'll probably split it down the middle as well and then we can um, get some good geometry and then I'll hand overlay it onto um, <clears throat> the other side. So there's a couple ways we can do this. I think the easiest way to start is actually to make one side and we're not going to merge it until we get um, both sides looking good, and then we'll merge them in the back, and I'll, and I'll show you what I mean. Just because the kimono is technically, it's the same on each side, but one's wrapping um, behind and one's wrapping in front. So, <clears throat> to get that overlap, I just want to make one side, and then I can just mirror it to the other. And one, one can just get tucked over the other, especially because it's such a short um, little thing. So, to do that... What I'll do, actually, oops. I'm gonna turn on double here. I'll just cut down the line like that. Oh, a little farther out. Or I might just cut this this way. So I want something kind of like maybe that. And then I'm just going to get rid of the half of this from the back. Uh, Kitsune is asking how you can purchase the Noman Workshop subscription from Columbia without a credit card. That would probably be an answer for a host, or you might be able to email Noman with that. Um, I wish I could help you, I don't know. What are you doing way over there? Okay. So we have half of this now, as you can see. And then I'm going to go ahead and stitch all this stuff so I get a nice... Um, I just want one clean line. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just needs to be... a line, like that. So that way, um, when I go and 
run a Z rematch on it, I can get something kind of nice. And then I'll throw one there. All right, let's run a Z remesher. So always have smooth groups on. I never like that. That looks okay. Ooh, one thing I actually want to do is I want. I want the sleeve as well. Okay, now let's try it. It works. Here you go, our host can help you out there. So now we have this little path here, and then we have our, we should have a loop that goes all the way around our sleeve, which is what we want. And if you ever want to clean up stuff like this and you just need a, um, a cleaner shirt, you can usually just smooth the stuff out and say same and like try, try it again. And you should be able to get something a little smoother as you start to get those. Unless you completely just retop it by yourself and by hand, which is the best way to do it if you're going to do it at all. But there we go. You can see that it'll start to kind of clean up pretty well. It always kind of ends up being kind of weird in these areas. Um, but I don't really mind it being there because we're not really paying attention to it. So now we have that. And go ahead and move this out. And so now see if I duplicate this and then I run a mirror, I can flip it. And now I have one side that I can push in more. On the other side, and now you can see in the back, if I hide all this, now I can just stitch it together. And we are well on our way. So that's a pretty easy way to do that. So I go ahead and merge down. And then you can do one or two things. You can either, you know, you could bridge this, but I'm, I, you can also mask it. And maybe mask um, these two here as well. So I'm actually grabbing these ones, whoops, these ones. Bring it to the center. Oops, where did my thing go? Oh, geez. Come on now. There we go. So I brought it home. I'm going to bring it back up. So I, when I scale these down to merge these, um, they should merge nicely. So I'm just scaling it down and then I'll run a mirror and, and then I can run a, um, not a mirror and weld, but a weld points. And that should work pretty well. Okay. Now they're now they're welded. The only thing that I might that you know initially to fix this um, is if we want a nice collar loop, right? We don't really have one yet, but that's not really a big deal. So we can do just some minor cleanup. I know this seems like uh, kind of a pain in the butt. But I find that the more control that you can have over these things like this is just easier to deal with. Uh, in the long run. And it won't be that bad to clean up because now I can just bridge this and then I'll put that there. There, totally fine. And now when I polygroup this one, yeah. 
Now we have a nice loop that goes all the way around. And now we have a, a shirt that has the same topology on both sides, which I like because then when I, when I do want to move this back and forth or I want to move the collar around, um, most of the topology will be the same except for the kimono part that, you know, overlaps. And technically, if I move this point here, that other point does line up. So me moving this in and out and stuff now is actually pretty easy. Big brain moves. Thank you. <laughs> Those big brain. That's what I got in this little head of mine. Um, hi, Ashley. How's your day going? This is Sosaito from YouTube. As always, going well. I can't really complain about my day when my day is hanging out with you guys on the internets and sculpting. So I have no complaints today. Totally fine. And for those of you guys just joining, um, we're making a druid character. I can show this actually again. I usually do, so my bad. I also brought in some new reference today. Um, just a little bit, because we're doing the... So our character has this little straw cape. I think I'll probably make it bigger. Um, because right now I think the volume of the shirt and her straw, it's kind of, it feels like the, almost the same size. So I think I might make it a little bigger. Um, plus look how big they are normally. They're huge. But I grabbed some reference of how actual straw stuff could be made. So this is from, I think it goes to Tsushima. Um, and I really like the way they do. They're so awesome with their detail. So again, grabbing models from, you know, other awesome artists, there's nothing wrong with that to see how people did it. Um, and then I like grabbing, you know, more historical drawings. And then I just found this randomly, but the detail is pretty cool. So I like how you can see it's a bunch of straw that's like knotted together with more straw. So it just gives me some ideas, you know, can, do we want to go this crazy detail? No, probably not with our stylized character. I think something close to this realm is kind of cool. Um, or keeping it really thick, you know, braids might be interesting. Um, but I do like these little knot details, so that's kind of cool. And then, you know, you can see kind of like the braiding that's happening um, throughout and he gets this result, which is wild looking. So it's pretty cool. But yeah, I always like to grab um, real world reference. And then you can also grab, you know, reference from other artists that are trying to do the same thing you are. I think it's good to have both. I wouldn't always just copy you know, don't just have Princess Mononoke up here. Have your own reference of how you want to do stuff. Because um, you always find something more intriguing and more interesting in the real world than just copying other artists. Because chances are they've already looked at real life reference as well. So there you go. But that's some reference for the straw that we're going to do. And there we go. So now if I move this around, I can bring this up more. And bring this out because it'll probably hang off from where the character's breasts are. And one thing we will do, which is kind of a, a pain, um, but at some point, and I don't know if I'll do it with the stream necessarily, but to print this, what's going to be easier is to cap these and close these off. Um, so eventually it would be easier just to have this be stitched and have this capped off and have this capped off. So that way um, your character, you know, uh, when you print it, doesn't have holes and, and things like that. So that's always a, a nice one. As you can see, I also blocked in the mask. Nothing crazy yet. I just did a quick... I wanted it to fit her face. And then what we'll do is we'll take it and I'm going to put it on top of her head um, for the final. Because I want her face to be showing for the print. Um, and then we'll have her stuff. But we're not going to cover that quite, quite yet. We're going to keep uh, adding her clothes <clears throat> for now. So for my uh, straw cape here, actually, let's give her some pants first. 
make her decent. <laughs> so pants are really easy. Um, this Dynamesh says it groups off. So now I have this. I'm going to approach it the same way. I'm going to inflate this a little bit. Get some baggy pants going at the top just to get the sh general shape. Right. And she's got kind of cut off pants. So that's really easy is I can just cut straight across and then I'll create cut straight across here. Boom. Now we get some pants. I'll delete hidden and then I'll always make um, a cut here. So that way when I go to do a CB mesh, you have some guiding lines to help uh, CB mesh make the right loop choices. Otherwise it won't like you and doesn't like to do it. So go ahead and run a ZB mesh on that. I'm getting too much craziness here. I could also cut it again and see if I can get it to follow. There we go. That's better. Getting a little stretched here. But that's not so bad. Cool. A little heavy on this, but I don't, and it's not really giving me a lot on the top here, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. So now she's got some pants. Now we can pull this out and make this wrap around. And again, these pants, um, I think for the sake of easiness for these, because it's not as complicated as capping off the kimono, I can just cap these off um, pretty much immediately. And realize I didn't apply that green. Which green? Which green? There we go. Maybe that one. So for this, um, I'm going to go ahead and try to get rid of some of these. That's a little better. It's not what it gave me nice loops through there, but that's okay. I'm gonna ignore it now. It's being mean. I'm just getting rid of some loops here because it's just too many. Um, it's a lot easier to deal and with pushing and pulling and capping off stuff if you're not dealing with so many loops. You also just want to give an evenness to everything, especially when you're sculpting. When I know later I'll be sculpting lots of folds, um, you want the topology to be fairly even. So you don't want too much topology in just one area. You want kind of a uniformity throughout the whole thing. So that way you can sculpt on it without worrying about one area getting not enough topology than the other. So we're going to go ahead and cap it off because we're going to prep it for printing. Obviously, if you're going to do cloth simulation or anything else like that, um, you don't have to do this. But what I like to do is I'll do this and then I will run an inset on this part here. And the new one will always break you and hurt your feelings. So just say legacy. Here we go. And make it thicker than you think, usually, is the rule. Because um, I want to utilize this to maybe flare out. So that way there is a overlap between where her pants are and where her skin is. Um, but you don't want it to be... You don't want it to be too thin, because then you're not going to be able to see it when you print it. I mean, I'll do the same for her pant legs. This might be a little too much. And then I'll do that. 
that way you do get you can get a little bit of um edge but it's always going to be watertight why are you green again Your pants are pretty baggy, so I'm going to start pulling out that shape. And by default, um, <laughs> this will always look pretty silly, uh, just because you don't have any folds that are telling you anything about the type of cloth it is, and so it's always going to look a little funky. We're just trying to get, again, that silhouette, and I'm trying to look at um, my character, and I'm thinking about where her pelvis is, right? And then all this and how this would kind of sag down and be baggy or maybe even overlap on top of where it, you know, rolls and curls back under. There you go. And I think I made them a little too short, so that's fine. Let's pull it down. I, in my concept, I can see that it's past her knees. That should work. And then uh, she has pretty baggy pants. Like the crotch line goes down pretty low. And that's not going to look super great until we start sculpting some stuff in there. So you can see that I lost my uh, caps, but that's okay. You can always redo them before you finish. The other thing, too, is it's nice to be able to crease these as well. So again, this is, again, easy to fix. There we go. And then um, I will also I'll keep this, but I'll just group all this together so that way I can crease it. So I have just like a very defined line at the moment as to where that all goes. All right, so now she's got some pants. And we have like some furry stuff and we'll do that when we do her fur just because it'll be easier to I like to do if I'm in the zone of you know making fur then I'll make fur for all the parts of the character um because I'll then usually I can find a piece that I can reuse or do something like that um that usually works pretty well so let's go ahead and add her She's got a rope, and then she also has some little wooden armor stuff. Um, not sure how I want to approach it yet. I like some of the detailing, so I'll show you. So I thought this was really cool. Because again, she's a druid, so I'm not allowed to use any metal. So the way she has to form armor is through just fabrics and woods, right? So I was thinking that for her armor, we could do, you know, kind of maybe a slab of pieces like that, which are pretty cool. Um, for basically, which part? <clears throat> for this part here. Just so that way, you know, we could do typical samurai, you know, armor, but she's not a samurai, right? She's a druid, so I feel like she would make it on her own. But this is fairly close to this, but this feels a little bit more... I don't know, kind of homemade-ish, you know? It's not as intricate. Um, it's a little bit more simple, so I kind of like that. 
Um, I also think it might be cool to even have the, the stitching around it like that too. Cause I think the color breakup is also really nice. Um, so I think giving her something like that on her hips will be cool. So that's kind of my idea for that right now. But we'll see. So we can go ahead and play with inserting that. But again, I like to reuse whatever I have, so I can go ahead and duplicate this and sew this out. I'll grab this. And I'm just gonna grab a square chunk from in here. And there we go. Now I have a piece that I can work with that's right there from her. Maybe change the color. Maybe it's like more of like an oakish or not an oak, like a cherry wood type. And then again, I like working with this stuff while it's really low so I can try to figure out you know, maybe there's a fancy shape that I could make out of it. Or maybe the top is, you know, bigger than the bottom. And once I start to find an idea, then I can simplify this even more to get a really simple shape. kind of how I like to work because it, it feels, you know, it's low poly, but I'm always exploring. And I like exploring at this stage because so much stuff is just still, um, it's very manageable to have it be low poly. How it's fine for these, it's either better to have it be more in the front. Um, or to have it be more in the back. I feel like on the side, for some reason, it never feels quite right to me. So I like to always put it either a little more to the front to give more room in the back or vice versa. It might be cool to have it or protecting her back. That way we can just have fun sculpting more um, cloth folds and patchwork and stuff. And then she's gonna have like her big rope and maybe we'll give her a little bag or something too. Or like a scroll. Because uh, my character is also a druid, but she's also a half-elf, which gives her like tons of um, languages right off the get-go. So I thought it would be fun if my character was kind of like a linguist. Um, so maybe she holds like, a you know, books or scrolls or something. Cause she's kind of like a paleontologist type, archaeological something. <clears throat> Go ahead and insert a... Cylinder. What I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to give this a decent amount of topology. See if I can make her uh, sash. I don't think this is the right one. Is this the right one? This doesn't seem like the right one. Maybe it is. Mm -hmm. I 
I want to give it a lot in one direction and more than I usually do because I'm going to um, do a fabric sim on it. What I'll do is I'm going to grab it. I'll just have her body visible. Draw symmetry here. And basically I want it to kind of cover where the waist is, but I don't want to shrink it to where the waist is because I'm going to do that um, using simulation. So I want basically it to kind of, I'm actually curious if I mask it. I wonder if I can do that. Let's try that. That could be fun. It might not work because the simulation for the brush isn't great, but <clears throat> it's always fun to experiment, right? I'm going to mask the bottom. I'm going to see if I can run the simulation and it'll hold that part in place and see if it'll bunch. I'm not sure if it's going to, but we'll see. It might just be based on gravity. So go to dynamics. Let's see. The collision volume is just whatever is visible. So that would be her. Whoa, too hard. So 10 was a lot. Let's try. It was working. I just got to stop it. Maybe iterations. We can turn down the iterations so that way it stops sooner. I'm trying to get it to stop. It might not work. If it doesn't work, then I'm just going to... Turn off gra gravity, and I will just use the cloth move. And nudge. See if this works. He brushes cloth sim, I feel like it wants to be so cool. And I just never feel like I get what I actually want from it. So I'm not liking that obviously. It's not looking great. Makes me sad. I think for like little folds and little things, once you have like the overall form figured out works, but I think other than that, I just think I struggle with it more than anything else. So that's all right. I'm just gonna. Do something different. We'll just leave stuff as a placeholder for now. I don't want to get too detailed. I think I'm getting too into it too soon with certain things before blocking out all the shapes. I definitely don't want to fall into that pitfall. It's very easy to get too detailed too soon. So I'm just going to leave some block outs first and I want to get the straw in there. Uh, JJ, oh wait, I have missing questions. Okay. Uh,
Conray says, what belt do you have in mind for uh, Apri? I'm not really sure what belt. I think I'm just going to do like a basic, like I, I wanted to do kind of like a basic rope sash type thing. That was kind of my initial idea. I do see some cool reference where it's more of like a tied in like a little knot and stuff. So I think later on I, I might try to do something like that. Um, I haven't quite decided. In my drawing, it's really, really simple. So um, I get to play a lot with what I kind of want to do with it, but we'll see. And then um, the next question is, for your design, do you take any inspiration outside of the usual fantasy and how do you define an archetype? Um, yeah, so I'm doing a druid, but I'm basing it off of um, feudal Japan. So what if a druid was... Um, more in that type of, if it was fantasy, but more of feudal Japan themed, right? So I think it's cool to take a lot of different inspirations from other cultures, you know, cause fantasy tends to fall into kind of like a medieval realm uh, most of the time. So, I think that's like the biggest thing for me is it's not just about, you know, how can you combine what's already done, which is usually medieval stuff with something um, new, you know, and I think that's really, really important. Yeah, it's, it's always about, you know, doing something where you take and combine and blend different things. So we don't have to stick completely just in what is accurate to feudal Japan, because then you're just making a historical piece at that point, right? Um, making something that's fun, that's taking from all sorts of different places, but feels like it can fit in the world that you've made in your worlds. Um, and your world building, then yeah, I think I think there's no limitation as to what you can make or what you want to make with that. That's usually where I'll start. And then as far as like gathering reference for sculpting, um, it's always gonna be the stars huge and bothering me. So, um, it's just a matter of finding, I like finding stuff that does fit together and make sense. Um, and then kind of work my way backwards from there into, you know, fantasy a little bit. But don't let what's so realistic kind of bog down your creative process. You want it to be, you want it to be fun. And again, you're not making it a historical piece. So I think it's important to keep it fun and keep it looking cool and interesting. Um, cause then I think people will, you know, relate to that more. It's so tiny. Hmm. I'm gonna start making the straw part. Keep it in symmetry. I can mask this and then I can move this the outside around. Right? So now I can move and face this kind of downwards. The easiest way to make shapes like this to me is to find your starting points and then your end points, and then you can add geometry 
as you need. Cool. So I think now we have basic, you know, it's a basic shape. Let's see actually if I want the angle to be maybe more aggressive so it feels more rigid. Maybe a little shorter. Again, I feel like this part's the more important part, is getting all these shapes right first. And then the detailing becomes a lot easier once you get these shapes in. And even at this low stage, I can use um, my clay tools to build this up. Then crease it so I don't lose my distance here. And now I can kind of slide back and forth to kind of start averaging. And start getting some more even topology once I'm kind of happy with that shape. Make it a nice little straw color or whatever color it is we're going to go for. Her mask is pretty much red. It's also red. I actually don't mind the sash being red, that's kind of cool. Have a little blob of color somewhere else. Alright, and then we have one more piece, so I'm going to duplicate this. Well, we have two more pieces, but they're basically the same. Is add a little plane here. Find our tiny little plane. Where are you, tiny plane? There he is. Always faces one direction, so you can't tell. There it is. Just block in her little sash that's going to be in the front. And then it's also going to be um, in the back, because remember we talked about how I thought it would be cool, since she's a druid, if um, she had this longer kind of sash piece in the back, too, that felt more like a, like a tail, almost. So when she runs around, she seems pretty, she has a silhouette that feels more feral. So that's kind of the idea for those pieces. Maybe one can be a little shorter than the other. I don't want to make it... I think I want to make it longer than the pants, just in general, but... There we go. Colorize that stuff. And then let's add her... She's got some little 
fabric, uh, kind of like protection glovey thingy. So maybe we can add some wood paneling or something on the top of it. Just like, so that way, again, if we make a material that's really similar in one place, it's always nice to repeat it somewhere else at least one more time. Three would be ideal. Um, so that way we get a good design sense and consistency without uh, throughout our character. So, and she only has it on one side, so I'm just gonna model it on one side. And these are always really easy because you can just top off the top and bottom. Complete hidden, and we can out of root that. And now we have something that kind of looks like that. And then we can on the inside make it this color. We'll inflate it. <clears throat> There we go. And usually I would do this on the inside because you would it would probably be on the inside, but you know, I want this to feel like it's wrapped and tied around. So I want to leave like a gap where uh, basically it gets stitched, it gets like tied together with some knots or, or something like that. So, um, but I want it to be more visible on her as a character because it's a cool, you know, detail piece. So I don't want it to be on the inside. I'm going to put it maybe in the back here, though, because you don't want it to be somewhere that doesn't make sense. But I want it to be somewhere that's more visible. So I'm going to slide these two together and I'm going to get rid of that edge. I'll do that. And then I think, again, I have the green part. I have this fabric piece going all the way down past her hands, but I'm wondering if, again, I think it'd be cool to put like a little wood panel there, but maybe we can do, um, we might be able to do something later with that. There are actually these really cool little extra pieces of like, uh, Would they get tied off with a little rope and stuff? Like this reference here, I'll show you what I'm looking at. So th this is really cool. I like this detail here. So maybe she has her, you know, um, little cloth with maybe some wrapped rope and little knots and stuff. But then on her palm is, you know, maybe some sort of wooden detail that's like that, that's wrapped. So see how he has kind of metal there? Um, but instead we can replace it with maybe this type of work and that's pretty common. Like this is wood paneling. Remember the, the hands are also made that way for this character as well. So I think something like that would be pretty cool. So I'm going to duplicate this. And again, I'm just a big fan, big, big fan of just grabbing what I have and making something new out of it. So I can drag this down. And this will be like the little paneling. And protect her, uh, her hand. Maybe it's the same color as that one. Which in that case, maybe there's some, we can do some like rope ties or something around.
And that'll get all strung together by, you know, different rope and things like that. So that'll be fun. Maybe that is on one side for a particular reason, whether it's, you know, defensively or um, we can just do some sort of other, I don't know, something different on her other side to give her a bit of asymmetry. Maybe she still has like a little wrapped glove or something on the other side, uh, but she doesn't have the whole arm piece. We can do something like that too. Little wraps or something. Cool. Uh, we gotta add her rope. So, for ropes and knots and stuff, you can always do like a, you know, just like a cylinder a tube or something. But I think I'm, I'm gonna try to use the Z sphere for this one. The Z sphere sometimes is just easier to control when you want very specific directions. And stuff. And it gives you pretty nice topology from the get go. You can also kind of like choose basically the thickness of stuff too, so I like that part about it as well. And what I like too is you can keep it really simple to start with. So you can just basically block it wrapping all the way around first. And then you can insert stuff to give it more detail and start to round it. Yeah, whatever works for you, whatever their, whatever method to your madness is totally fine. Sometimes I just like to switch it up because it's fun to just do something different. If you have like a certain way of doing something all the time, sometimes it's nice just to break out of that and do it a different way. By default, again, it always makes it Dynamesh, which we don't want. That looks pretty good. And now we can just make it. And bring that in, and then I don't need the Z-Sphere version anymore. go and then what's cool too is I could actually duplicate this and swing it around and turn it into the big knots
I'm just gonna give it a little less topology because I don't need that much topology anymore for this shape. Barry says, nice sculpt. Thank you, Barry. Appreciate it. We are just starting. And then I can use my... Just move it around to get something that feels like it's hanging. And then I'll create like a big, nice um, knot within there as well. And I'll make the second one over here. I think it's okay to also make this stuff. And later you'll see, I'm doing this as the knot, the rope's kind of the first example of it. But as we block out thickness for all of this, it'll be pretty thick. Because um, remember, in reality, our character's going to be, I don't know, like when I print it, it'll be maybe this big, I think. Let's see, I have my little paper. It's going to be a little bigger than that. So it'll be... around this size, actually. Um, at least on my screen, this is about actual size. So you can see it'll be really tiny, but if you look from afar, you know, the knot actually looks the best because it's thick enough to compensate for how tiny the, the sculpt will be. And even if you're doing something that's not super, super tiny, this is usually a good, um, rule of thumb to use regardless. Now I'm gonna duplicate it. And I'm just gonna do, and again, uh, for printing sake, if I'm doing you know, I don't want to create like a ring because then that might create little holes, right? So it's easier just to make like a cylinder. Cook. Hello, cook. And then when I, I can make this do that. Right, so it looks like a knot. And I can duplicate it and scale it down and move it around and stuff. So it sells the idea of it being a knot, right? But um, what I like about this is that it's watertight. It keeps it nice and watertight. Now I don't have to worry about there being some weird gap or something that I have to fill in later. Um, so a lot of stuff that I'll sculpt will be very similar to that. Like, you know, even though there's a gap here, I'm going to push... Um, if you're not gonna do something where you can cap it off, you definitely wanna do something where it will dig super deep into the character. So that way you know for certain um, you're not running into any sort of gapping issues. Not sure what I want to do with this yet. Maybe not red. Maybe have it just be a similar. Maybe it'll be like a dark belt sash or something. I'm not really sure. I want to make something too that's also going to be easy to see from, you know, a tiny perspective since it's going to be printed small. So you want something fun to be able to detail. And maybe this stuff, uh, attaches to, whoops, attaches to it, you know, and we'll wrap around like a fun way. We'll add some more, you know, little ropes and stuff along the sides.
Cool. So the only thing left to do is to um, block out the fur. So let's do that. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and insert a cylinder again, make a simpler cylinder. And this I'll just, I'm going to just dynamesh it. Um, I'll dynamesh it at a fairly decent resolution. Because then what I'll do is as a block in, I can Well, I guess there's two ways to do it. I guess it depends on how um, if I want it to be kind of like bunchy and messy or if I want it to be more clean like her hair where it's very particular tubes, right? So if I pull it out like that, you can see you'll start to get fur pretty quickly. So I can pull the focal shift back and I can start pulling this stuff out in all directions from the top. I'm going to start spinning it and pulling it down. It will look really spiky at first, but then what you can do is run an inflate on it to start giving it a fluffiness. Especially for printing, you just kind of want like some depth in there. Well, that is fluffy. Uh, Corey is saying that he feels like he can feel the materials. I'm assuming that's what you're saying of uh, all the stuff that we're sculpting. And I appreciate that. It is important to think about, you know, the materials that you're using and what the materials your actual character has, what they have access to, and how that creates variation and breakup within um, the sculpt. So again, I'm going to zoom out here. And again, at this scale, at something small, you kind of want that to be pretty big, right? If I make this more realistic where it's like really small, like that probably, right? Like that feels more right in a real world setting. But look how tight, like you can barely see it. If I was to go in and like paint that, you know, when the figure is really small, you're not, it's not really going to read very well. So that's what I'm talking about when we're talking about like thickening things up making things bigger than you think so really you want that to have like a decent volume and right now because their feet are pretty close together they're going to merge um but i just split them so you can't have that because it's just a nice block in for now um but yeah so that's the, that's what i'm talking about about having big big thicknesses because the, the smaller it is the harder that's going to be able to see Right now, I think your silhouette's looking pretty cool. You can see that, you know, that's really what we're focusing on here when we're looking at these things. Um, it's from the front. She's got her cool mask and her nice, I like the way the silhouette of her straw is feeling. I think it gives her a pretty nice little breakup um, and everything. So, and as we spin our character around, I think uh, as we start adding thicknesses to certain stuff, I think it will look good. fur now on the top the fun the fun bit i'm just gonna take this which i have 
duplicate it, turn it into that white color, and I'll just dynamesh it. And I'm just trying to get um, overall shape right now. That's all I care about. Turn off groups because I just need to be one big shape. There we go. And I'm going to turn off her um, bangs because in reality, if she was to put it on, her bangs would probably be hidden underneath it. Right? So I need to see... All this would attach. I picture it attaching up to the top of the mask that we have here. Right? It's gonna push behind her ears. See, this is interesting now is with her head, with her ears too close or too much to the side, you can see from 3D, we have a lot more trouble figuring out, you know, how does all of her hair flow? Because you can see this is where 2D will lie to you, right? Is in this, you're like, oh yeah, that hair's going to have plenty of room and yada yada and all these things. But it's not until you start putting it in depth and putting it into that real perspective in 3D where you have to solve these things. So I want her ear to stick out right so now we have to figure out you know how we can kind of but i don't want it to look too thin like i want that silhouette of the fur to stick out um so there's a few things is her ear maybe as a character whoops come forward a bit more and turn more so they're almost always like kind of poking out more right and that'll help capture that silhouette more. And then you can see it gives us a lot more room. We can also do something where maybe her ears are too long and we can make them a little shorter. It's probably like too big to begin with anyway. At least this part is because it doesn't feel very dainty, very feminine. But maybe we can do something like that. And now we have more room. Make sure that that shape feels a little better. And her sash or her straw is probably going to hang down a bit more. And you got to think of also weight. So if this is, you know, pretty heavy, then maybe her shirt obviously is going to, you know, it'll fall through. So you can kind of hide that. The biggest thing is you want to make sure it doesn't fall through her actual self, right? But we should be able to give ourselves a little bit more room there. And now we can grab this and, you know. Now we can uh, add some fur. Make it pretty wild. And we might be able to later, I might be able to um, sculpt little pieces of like wild fur. And then we can nano mesh it on there and create variety to make it look cleaner. Um, for the sculpt and then that will give me like ultimate control.
Looks like a scary porcupine right now. And we can, if we want to make it a little more friendly, we can kind of inflate it. This will also be friendlier to print. You shouldn't, don't ever print, you know, super, super small stuff. But we want to inflate this. And that's why later, you know, um, I'll probably remesh the shape so I get the shape. And then I can do, you know, nano mesh or something like that to get the, the detail that I want. Oops, close holes. Try it again. There we go. There you go. Something like that. You get something pretty fluffy. You know, you can... I probably won't spend too much time on this because I'm probably just gonna redo it. But if you wanted to, I mean, from a distance, printing it even, you know, at that scale looks pretty fluffy and sells pretty well as fur. Obviously, all you have to do is turn off symmetry and go in there and, you know, add some variance in there and um, it'll sell pretty well. You know, maybe that hair comes up and rests on her shoulders. Then when she's running around and stuff, it'll be a bit more wild. I think it will stay contained onto the straw. It would be weird if it went too down, too far down. Because then that would also just become her tail and we're, there'd be no need for this other piece. Which, you know, could be interesting. Um, I don't know. Tell me which one you guys actually like more, because now I'm not entirely sure. So now they pulled it down, I'm like, uh, I don't know. She could have, like, kind of a cool-looking tail thing. Pretty, pretty interesting. You guys have, uh, an opinion of one or the other? Let me know. Oh my gosh, stop telling me to use sculptures. Stop it. I know what I'm doing. I know what I want. When I want sculptures, I'll tell you. Alright, what else? What else? What else we got to do? We can start, um... Hmm, what time do we have? Let's see. Okay. I think we can start detailing some stuff. I think I already know how I want to approach the, the straw. So I think I want to do that. I think I'm going to do that first. So, this is going to be very particular on, like, where the geometry is here. So, I'm going to get rid of this edge loop. Slide maybe this one down. Start evening these out. Okay. We'll see how it looks. I'm, I'm just trying to think of how I want to um, 
Oh, for the hair, someone says, please go back 60 steps. <laughs> we'll probably cover more first, so don't don't worry about it. Um, it's just a snake hook brush with a with this special alpha here. That's it's not that special. It's called it's alpha 08 and Z brush. Um, and then you can just pull out basic shapes. Um, I'm wondering if I'll get the look that I want in one or two ways. Let's just try it with this way for now, but um, let's see how it looks. So what I'm gonna do, actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna do it the other way because I have an idea. I think, it, I think it'll work. I'm not sure yet. I don't know. Ah, indecisiveness coming at me. Let's just do it this way. I'm gonna block something in. We'll see what it looks like. And then I can make my decision. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna do a cube. I'm basically making um, straw, just one piece of straw though. So I'm gonna mirror and weld this. And then I'm gonna kind of do some like just simple low poly where I'll like bevel this and then um, maybe I'll inset this and scale this. Scale, where are you? I can read, there we go. Scale this in a little bit. Then I'll take the inside here. Put that in. I just want like to create like a little divot, basically. And as simple as possible, I want to create the shape. Because you don't want it to be um Too high res because there's going to be a lot of them. Um, so you want to try to get the most out of. Oh my goodness! Give me my edge loop, thank you. Out of the least amount of topology, you know. So this is 56, and that's starting to look a little bit like a little straw piece. Okay. Um, then what I'm gonna do? Let's see how this lays out first, and then I'll make. Because I want to create. In the reference, there's like little places where it knots, right? So there's these places here where it knots. So if my straw ends and I create little knots and then my next straw begins, um, then I think I could get something that looks cool. Or the other idea is to make one big long piece of straw and then insert knots onto one mesh. Don't worry, I'm not crazy, guys. I, I promise. <laughs> promise I'm thinking through this and being like, how? What's going to be make the best look? Um, but for now, let's just try this. So I'm going to take this, uh, make it an insert mesh, say new, and then make it um, create a nano mesh. And then we're going to go to our straw here. We're going to say poly group all. We're going to drag that out. Yeah, I think this will work. We have our little straw piece here. And now what's cool about this is a nano mesh. If I want more, I can just give myself, oops, not that way. I can just give myself more. We can use fit. We can start thickening them up. You can kind of start to see how, how that's going to look. Or even with just one, probably will look okay. We can try different things. Fill isn't going to work. 
There we go. We can adjust the length to like overlap if we want, and then height will change the thickness. And this is where we will want it to be surprisingly um, thick. And then the more we tile it, you know, the more crazy detailed it will get. I think three is maybe too much. That's giving me, I think, the breakup that I want, but then to see what I can do is I can add little ringlets at the end of the nano mesh. Um, and I think that'll give me like an interesting pattern. So let's let's try it and see because it what I like about this is I know that it'll line up um, because it's based on the polygroup polygons. So if I go back to my mesh here. What I can do is duplicate it. I'm gonna create a cylinder. I'm gonna simplify the cylinder more. Because again, you just don't need that much topology. I'm gonna bevel the edges here. I'm basically going to create a crisscrossing pattern at the top here. I need to thin that out first. Hold on. It's just easier to thin this out first. Adjust this to fit around it. Make it feel like it's. We'll see how it looks. Um, oops. But this is what I like is is playing with like simple things first. Now we have that, and I'm just going to colorize that to be like a brown. And then this is that yellow. Might be a little too yellow. I don't know. We'll see. But now I can grab this and I'm going to drag this down. So now I have one at each end, which I might not need because it's duplicate. We'll see how it looks. So maybe thin this out a bit. Oops. All right. So now we have this. Now what we can do is um, to make life easier, I can just insert this into somewhere else. So now I have it here. I can go back here, go back to my thing. I'm going to go to my brush. And it'll be in here. It'll say modifiers. Nano mesh, where are you? There you go. Go to my nano mesh. Sorry, one second. I'm like, not reading anymore. So instead of this, I can pick this and I can drag it out. Didn't do it. Where is it? Oh, I didn't show the instance. There it is.
you do that again, kind of try to line it up a bit more. It's not going to be perfect, perfect. Then we'll do fit. We can change the width and the height again. We can lengthen it. And then we'll tile it twice. We got to change the width again if we do that. Now you get something that looks fairly complicated, but not very hard to make, which is cool. And later on, what I'll do is um, I'll always keep the geometry underneath it, right? Because we don't want for our, um, you know, we don't want to create this type of mess. This would be a nightmare to print. Um, so this is just something that's going to lay on top of an already existing nice piece of geometry. So that way um, we just get detail on the top and we can move it and, and kind of change it around as we want. But this gives us a nice base to work off of um, and then kind of work from there. What I like about this is this is just a preview. So I can go in here if I want to change the direction of straw you know I can in symmetry would be kind of helpful wouldn't it there we go so, you know you can see that these are kind of splaying out so if we move these around, they should kind of splay out maybe a little nicer. And this is how you can see like me sliding this up will 100% affect the way this all stitches together. Um, so, you know, if you want to create more, more uniformity in this, then we can slide these edges to be more uniform. Societo says two things. First, save. Thank you. <laughs> You're my hero. <laughs> Why do I always forget to save? That used to say it. He should get like a discount or something for keeping me on track, I swear. Um, and then second, he says I should make a small tutorial with that process because it looks amazing. Um, yeah, nanomesh is super powerful and I don't think people utilize it. Um, maybe enough in like, I think the secret is, you know, an in interesting and creative way. Um, because it sells really easily. I mean, it just looks cool. Um, and if we wanted to, we could try to rotate, let's see, oops. Nope, don't rotate that way, I guess. But we can slightly rotate stuff to start getting things looking a little more uniform. And if you want more control, um, you know, I made this into to the same mesh, right? But in reality, what I might do is, um... You can split this off into like a whole set. You can make another separate little segment. Um, and this works really well for also like feathers, you know? You can think of a million different ways to utilize this. But another method that I was gonna try, um, and it's so easy to try, we'll just try it, is I'm gonna auto group this and then grab this dude. You don't technically have to make it longer. I'm just making it longer because it's easier to kind of see. Because if we do something like that, where we have, um, you know, these little segments, and what I'll do is I will insert. Oh my goodness, do the things. Insert an edge. No. Insert an edge loop there. So 
So what I'm doing is I want to insert an edge loop so I can make it feel like it's going to squeeze itself. There's a lot of upfront work to be done in the beginning, but once you have it, um, it's really easy. They're not, they're not one object, they're one sub tool. Um, one of the questions is, uh, are the knots in stick one object? They're separate objects attached to just one sub tool. Um, to make my life easier. It'll make your life easier too. So if we do something like this, right? Um, which by the way, I'm gonna duplicate. And I'll go back to my original, just in case I want to keep that one. Okay, so now I have both of them. But I'll take this one, and I'm going to duplicate this guy. I'll turn off Nano Mesh here. And what I'll do is I'm just going to get rid of um, these edge loops here. And it, it's going to be... Um, straighter than than the uh original one but now if i take this one and do create insert mesh new just create a nano mesh go back to this guy here i'll drag it out oops so it by default makes a i think an index I can just delete one. There we go. Drag this out. So now I have this. And again, kind of the same effect. Um, say fit, change the width, and maybe shorten the length a little bit and make it hot, thicker. And then again, we can just tile as much as we want. And this might be the better way to do it. Because this is technically probably more realistic. Um, is it's all this, right? Because like the, our reference is it's one straw that's going down, down and like getting knotted and then straw and knotted, right? Um, and you can see the result of that. But two ways to do it. You know, this way might be better than this way. If you didn't want, let's say you wanted the same number, like I think two looks cleaner, right? Then you can just go in here. It's nice because it, you can just hide the instance and you can get rid of that. Whoops. You can get rid of that and then we can just slide this up. And if we turn it back on, you see it can get the same exact thing as we got from here, right? Um, I think this one might be a little cleaner. And it's also nice that it's one whole giant mesh. Um, so yeah, you can see where <laughs> I wasn't crazy. I was like, oh, maybe do it this way or maybe do it that way, right? And it's, a, it's important to try both and see which one um, feels better to you. So I like this version more, so... I think this is going to be too much cleanup because this is all separate, um, you know, straw. Whereas this isn't. Um, so now I can delete. And if I want to create more like loose straw later, that's just as easy to kind of change up and, and move around. But I think this ends up being a little bit of a cleaner result. Um, the hardest thing, obviously, with doing it as one whole mesh is... The, these knots also get bigger. So that's where I would personally do, I'd probably just do the knots separately, right? So we can just create a separate um, section that can loop around. Um, but for now, I'll just, I'll just leave it as, as is because it looks fine. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna, I'll go back later and we can change how uniform, you know, those knots would be. But that's a pretty easy way to, to achieve some straw. And you can do that with really real, you know, you can noodle like kind of like wobbly, you know, looking straw and multiply it just a bunch of times and you'll get something that looks pretty good. 
Um, but for the fact that this is stylized, you know, we want to keep it fairly clean. And then when we turn to actual mesh, that's where we can inflate and sculpt on it and move it around and, you know, create little flyaways and some imperfections into it. Um, that'll make it feel really, really real and not kind of like it's a, a nano mesh machine part. So. And then for the last uh, few minutes here, I think I'll work on the mask. Then I think the thing that I'd like to end with today is um, taking this mask and putting it on top of her head. So that way we can, um, next time, you know, we can add some rope that goes around her ears or wherever it attaches and stuff like that. Um, Her mask isn't anything super complicated, so should be enough time to work on it. I'll extrude all of this in super deep. Again, if you're gonna, if you can't cap things off really easily, it's a lot easier just to make it really thick to really drive it into the surface of your model so that way when you you know print it later you'll have a lot less um holes and gaps and things I'm trying to have it in the elevation Oh, there we go. That's why. I also hate by default, it gives you alternate, but I just like to say keep it. So we're going to pull this out and give it some resolution. because She's got like a little bump that goes along. And then we can just in the back stitch this. Or did it get rid of that? That's interesting. Turn on double. Oh, it did. That's funny. It did all the geometry, but then it was like, I'm not going to stitch it for you. For some reason. Uh, Heart Attack Grill on Twitch is asking, um, when you were new to 3D and you were learning, what did you do? Um, so I went to school for some 3D, but I learned... Um, I dabbled in Blender when I was younger, and I think the most important thing when you're learning 3D um, that seems easy and simple, but have a project in mind. So I think the biggest thing that the biggest mistake that I made before when starting 3D was I would just like enter into ZBrush and then just kind of be like, I'm just going to do something, you know with absolutely no plan as to what I was going to do. Um, that's problematic. So, cause it's not going to teach you, you know, you're like, okay, what do I need to learn and what's useful? Or you go, oh, I need to make hair or I need to make, you know, a straw cape. And then you can't look up anything to help you with, um, you know, problem solving some stuff. So I think, I think that's the biggest issue is, um, you need to be able to pick something that allows you to problem solve because that's really what 3D is kind of all about, um, is problem solving. So I think uh, I think ultimately the most important thing is to pick a project and, you know, it can be really simple. You know, if you're just starting out, maybe your first project is going to be, you know, like a vase or something, um, something really, really simple. And that's fine, but just make sure that, you know, you're picking something with like goals in mind of how can I learn a thing, you know, whether it's sculpting or whether it's 3D modeling or texturing. Um, I just think it's really important to have something that you're like, okay, this is what I'm learning, you know, 
um, because I want to make X, Y, and Z, you know? Um, so that's where I would start, you know, when you're, when you're a beginner, I think it's really easy just to be like, I'm going to go in and do some stuff and then have no idea later, you know, what, what you're actually doing or what your goals are. So setting goals is really important. Hope that helps. I don't think this is going to work because I want the eyes to be very um, specific. So I actually just might cut into this. Make it fun. Make it fun is important for sure. Now it looks like a nightmare, doesn't it? Ashley, what are you doing? Don't do it. Okay. Just, just, just trust me. It'll be fine. I like putting myself in the situations like this where you're like, let's see how messed up I can do this and fix it quickly. Try to extrude the edge loop here. Oh, it almost did it. <laughs> Why doesn't it want to do that side? That's funny. Dude, you can just go in here and do a little bridge. Might be too big of eyes, but I don't think so. I'm gonna make them even smaller. Let's see if it can let me extrude in. Nope. Oh, I'm still bridging, that's why. That's why. Nope. Also, this is the uh, idea of have a plan first, because, you know, if you scroll, if I start modeling this and I'm like, oh, the eye's too small now, then there's not a whole lot I can do about that. But I'm looking at this, um, my reference of these little tiny thin eyes that these uh, masks have, and I think they're kind of cool. So I want to kind of create this same idea. Oh no, her eyebrows can see, but she can't. I'm also not super worried about this, by the way. Um, eyes for masks, by the way, also, um, just to note, they're always going to look really bad if you try to bring the eyes in as close as you can so that way the eyes can actually see look how close together that mat those eyes have to be um it always looks really silly so even when i was doing practical effects for um legacy we would always um sculpt the eyes for like goggles and stuff a little more offset than they really needed to be because it just doesn't look right when you actually put 
them in the right spot, which is funny. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Because this is still pretty low, it's not that hard to go in and like fix or adjust stuff. I mean, that was a pretty big adjustment and I probably should play in the head better than that. But I just wanted to see if I could do it. And that's close enough to me for her to be able to see out, but I think that's fine. So now I can go ahead and try to Close this up. Oh, well, let me select that little polygon. How annoying. Now? Now, let me select it now. That was obnoxious. I'm also not actually letting the eyes um, go all the way through. Aren't you letting me extrude in? Wow, you're gonna be a butt like that? How obnoxious. Shoot in, thank you. Yeah, so we can get something looking like that, and then obviously this lower half of her grab some of that is uh, white. And then same thing in here, we can just make this black And it always is going to, until you add more polygons, it's always going to do something like that. So that's where you can grab um, all this stuff and just make it red and then it should fill in black. Don't, because again, um, ZBrush is... Uh, vertex painting base, so if you don't have enough vertices to do what you want, then... There you go. Okay. And now we can take that, and I'm just going to merge it down for now with the... ...horns. And now I can take it and put it where I think it would probably rotate from. I can rotate it up onto her face. It's important for her to fit her face, but I also want to, you know, make sure that um, it'll be round enough. I probably want it to cover. We can now turn her bangs back on too. Probably cover something like that, and then I can make um, the bottom probably a little wider. Okay, if the mask is going to be a little bigger. And then I can tr make sure her hair, obviously, is going to squish into it. And then now I can take the fur 
I can push that all back to giant straw in my way. <laughs> there we go. Come on, let me give me give me the fur. I'm running out of time here. Give me the fur. And the fur will catch up into, you know, their sort of thing. And again, I don't want to make it too big to where when it goes back down to her face it would be unrealistic, but... And this will be also nice and easy to print too, because her hair will be basically butt up against her face. So it'll be it basically become all nice one shape will be cool. And then we can add some string that goes into here and do all that stuff. <laughs> How many is asking, do I get paid for OT? Um, I do not. It's fine, though. This is always fun to do. I like doing it. So just to wrap that up, I think that'll be fun. There's some stuff on the mask that I think I, I want to adjust. Like, I think her... I think it accidentally got squished, actually. On accident. It totally looks like it got... But maybe that's also because we... widened it, which means the proportions might have gotten a little wonky. But I do think that this uh, yellow part needs to get like a little bigger and stuff like that, so we can adjust that later. But there we have it. So we have her, pretty much her whole costume blocked out, except for maybe some straps and we'll add some more strings and stuff. But, um, and then I'll, I'll do, do some detailing and stuff. Um, maybe a little bit off stream, but for now I will save it and call it a day. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, this is Archetype, spon um, not sponsored, hosted, I was going to say sponsored by Ashley. It's not sponsored by me. Hosted by me, Ashley Sagan. Um, so if you guys are enjoying the Steward character, tune in next week as we keep detailing. And I think the week after that, we'll go into posing it and um, we'll move on to our next character. But I'll always make sure to show you guys the print when we're done with it as well, since that's kind of the goal of these um, characters is to utilize my new lovely printer. So hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, have a good night. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye.